I know that I will be speaking to people that are in this category that I'm talking about right now. And I don't want you to feel condemned. Just allow me to use the word of God to bring forth the light that is necessary. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. May I submit to you, my sisters and my brothers, God does not approve of children being born before marriage. Children were meant to be born in a marriage where there is a father and a mother. If anything happens that one of them passes away, so be it. But the children are supposed to be born out of a process of a marriage. Praise the Lord. Amen. What do you think when you go walking pregnant aside for a while. Let us talk as men. How do you feel when you are there walking, walking so tired and they know you, you are not married? Particularly you, my sisters, I'm talking to you. What, what kind of image does it bring with it? Is it right? But do you know that the society has accepted it? And we, we think that it is right. I am not here to teach laws and do's and don'ts. No, no, no. I am just helping you walk in the light. Praise God. You are not supposed to, young men, before you are married, please leave the sisters alone. You can date, you can, you can, you can have a girlfriend with whom you will get married and it has to be kept according to the way of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I told you, the devil takes God's things and turns them around. Okay? And makes the society accept them as though they were good and they are not good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't feel condemned. Suppose you have a child already. I know there are people here. I know without a doubt. I don't need to ask. If that be the case, now you are a new creation. The old is passed away. You are now in Christ Jesus. And none of us is perfect anyway. Praise God. Me preaching to you here is not perfect either. But the help from God gives us the direction in life where we must we correct and we walk again straight with the Lord. And we attract the blessing of God upon our lives. Praise Jesus. The reason why man lost the position that God gave to him. I was at where I was saying that the only thing that we are still doing according to the plan and the will of God is bringing forth children. Because it has to be a population between male and female for a child to be born. So whether done wrong or right, Somehow, we are still doing exactly what God intended for us to do what? To do. Except I need you to do it in the right context. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Allow me to stay there for a while. When you give birth to a child and you are, you are still in your parents' home, you are jobless, you don't have money, what do you expect of your baby? Unatarajia nani ndiya mnulicha kula? You, you are still a dependent of your parents. Now you also want them to be taking care of your baby as well. Do you see how we have messed up the society? How we have messed up the, the arrangement of God? God puts everything perfect. But man, by the deception of the devil, has made things to look upside down. And therefore, we are suffering in the creations of our own. Not what God said. When we get back to the light of God, things will get back the right way. Praise God. And all the sufferings that you see around your home, they will not be there anymore. I can guarantee they will not be there anymore. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God has come. The colony of earth is the colony of heaven. That means the culture of heaven is supposed to be experienced on earth. 
In heaven there is nobody sick. Why are we sick on earth? In heaven there is nobody broke. There is no lack. There is no need in heaven. But we are suffering these things on earth. Why? Because the colony declared independence from God. You know, I wish we never declared independence from the white man. Our roads are potholes. We don't have water. Our hospitals are the way they are. Can I also tell you, even this school, it is not the way it is supposed to be. Because it is being managed by people who declared independence from the colonizers. What the colon Do you know that the, some of the things we are still using in Kenya up to today, they were made by the colonizers? The only reason other countries like South Africa are strong economically is because they still have the whites with them. And I'm not worshipping the whites. I just want to relate with you over things that you can see, things that you can touch, things that you know about. Let us not talk about heaven and yet we have not gone to heaven. Let's talk about the earth because we are here on earth. How I wish that we never declared our independence from the white man. We would be economically better than we are today. The earth represented by Adam declared independence from heaven when we disobeyed God's instructions. The instruction of God was, you shall eat of all this except this one. And the day you will eat of this, what was the word? You shall surely what? Die. You shall surely die. We dis we 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 disgraced God. We went off the way of God by doing contrary to what God had said. And by so doing, heaven cut link with heaven, with, with the earth. The link that was between God and man was cut off. The Bible says that every time I want to bless my people, Jacob. Their sins block me from blessing them. To colonize means to bring in your image into the colon. What is a colon? You, you, have you seen the structure of a person, the drawing of a person, the colon? The colon connects from the mouth to the rectum. Is that graphical enough? Is that graphic enough for you to understand? The colon connects from the mouth all the way to the rectum. We eat from the mouth of the Lord. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And for a very long time, there was no word coming from heaven. Until Jesus had to come. I am trying to tell you why Jesus came. Jesus came to reconnect the colon that was cut. The colon was cut and therefore there was no communication between heaven and earth. The visitation of the cool of the day as it used to happen was no longer happening. Because man went contrary to the instructions of God. Matter of fact, man was chased away from the garden of Eden. And an angel was placed at the gate to make sure that man does not come back to the garden of Eden. But that angel was moved away when Christ came. And when Jesus came, he made this declaration according to Matthew 4, 17. He said, now repent for what you lost has returned. Oh, you need to clap to the Lord at that point. Praise the Lord. What you lost, the connection, the colon that was cut off, I have reconnected it. Because to connect it, we needed blood. We needed blood, blood of Jesus. Did you notice that when Adam fell, what did Adam do? The Bible says that he cut twigs and leaves and he covered himself. And in, Je in, in Genesis chapter 3 verse, verse 9, the Bible says, God said that God, God came and God said, Adam, where are you? What kind of question do you think that is? Do you think God did not know where Adam was? And why did God ask that question? That question is not about a geographical location. That Adam was hiding somewhere here. And therefore God could not see him. No. Adam was simply there. But Adam was out of the place of kingship. Praise the Lord. It was a question of disposition. Not a question of a geographical location. Do you understand?
natural water mean? Let not that word disposition uh, 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 confuse you. It's just a normal English word you are teachers, so I expect you to understand. It was a question of disposition, leaving the place where you ought to be, the place of authority, the place of rulership, and being where you ought not to be, a place of suffering, a place of poverty, a place of sickness and disease, a place of, of dryness, and there is no the cover of God. The visitation of God that used to take place every day was no longer happening. This is where Adam was. And this is where everybody that is outside of Christ is, even now. Praise the Lord. And Jesus came, and Jesus is telling people that before you lost it, it was given to you freely. But now, for you to regain it, you have to do something. And you have to repent. You have to confess. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Then you will be saved. Hmm. Isaiah 32 verse 17 the Bible says and the work of believing hmm. how do you define righteousness righteousness ok wait just don't look into the scriptures just look up unto me the Bible says with our hearts we believe and it is what counted to us as righteousness and with our mouths we confess. This is found in the book of Deuteronomy and it is paraphrased in Romans. With our hearts we believe and it is counted to us as righteousness. But it doesn't stop there. You have to use your mouth to confess. Then you are saved. Praise the Lord. So righteousness is believing. And Abraham, the Bible says, believed God and it was counted to him as being righteous before God. When God told him that you will be the father of many nations, this was an old man. He couldn't believe it. But he chose to believe the Lord. And the Bible says it was counted against, it was counted on Abraham as what? As righteousness. Therefore, Isaiah 32 verse 17, the Bible says, the work of righteousness shall be peace. The work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. But the effects of righteousness, mazao ya haki, kazi ya haki itakuwa ni amani. Bwana sifiwe. When you believe my words, when you believe the words that I am speaking, I'm speaking God's word. Okay? I'm not speaking my words, I'm speaking God's word. When you believe the words that you are hearing, my sisters, even if I know you feel bitter now because I spoke about it and I feel sorry, I, I didn't mean to hurt you in any way. I only meant to bring forth the message of God. Praise God. I know somebody may not like me from now and may say, hey, that preacher is judging me. I need you to know that before today we never knew one another. So there is, I have nothing against you personally. Okay? So I'm only speaking from the pulpit. I have the privilege of standing on the pulpit to speak the word of God. And the word of God says, when you believe, the work of believing shall be peace. Praise God. Amen. So even if your life has been going through turmoil, because probably you gave birth to a baby before you were married, and you have been going through turmoil, you have been suffering, believe God. Amen. Amen. There is a way out. There is a way of escape from the problems that are created around us by the devil. It is by believing God. And the Bible says, when we believe God, what that will work in our lives is peace. Praise God. And therefore, if your life has been going through ups and downs because of that, peace of God be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, the effects of that believing God. What does it say, Pastor? Did you find it? In a semaji? skin. 17. The fruit of righteousness will be peace. Mm -hmm. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. Amen. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord for that. <laughs> and the effect of righteousness shall be confidence. After you have acquired the peace of God in your life, the confidence of God to face life will come upon you. 
upon you. Mm. And that confidence the Bible says will stay with you forever. Oh, praise the Lord. I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. You know, when you are still a sinner, the Lord loved you. And he came and he paid that price to restore you to that which you lost. Praise God. The peace and quietness and confidence in God has been restored through Christ Jesus. And the Lord of God is saying, repent for the kingdom of God has come. That which you lost has returned. Repent and receive it. Today, if there is anybody here who is not born again, you are not yours. You don't have to give your life to the Lord. Because you need back the peace of God, the quietness and the confidence that you lost in life, you want to regain it through Christ our Lord. Praise his holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I feel his anointing upon my life. And if you are sick, we're going to deliver you. We're going to heal you. The Bible says, and we shall lay our hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. That healing is no longer in heaven. That healing is with us. Praise the Lord. The healing is with the men of God, the women of God. When we lay our hands upon you, the Lord shall heal you by confirming his word. Why? Because he's faithful and true to his word. Jesus came to bring back the colonization, to bring back the culture of God that which we lost. But remember, Jesus was not going to stay with us. So him, he only came to do one thing, to provide the blood. I was at a point where I was explaining, when Adam and Eve sinned and God came, they were hiding and they were tying some leaves around them. Have you read that in the scriptures? They were covering themselves with leaves. And what did God do? Have you read it beyond that point? Beyond that point, the Bible says, and God killed an animal and used the skin of...